Yo, what's going on guys? I'm Sam. Welcome back to another iOS 13 beta update video. Today we saw developer beta 4 released packed with tons of cool changes and features that I can't wait to show you guys like this one right here, redesign 3D touch or haptic touch menus. If you guys are excited to see all the new stuff in this update, drop a like down below. Seriously helps me out. And of course hit subscribe so you stay up to date on the latest iOS 13 and iPad OS news. Let's go ahead and get started. Now before looking at anything else, I do want to show you guys the official iOS 13 emoji. There was some speculation about exactly what we'd be seeing, and now we know for sure. Apple has confirmed this over on the newsroom section PR part of their site. Lots of new options for like interracial couples. You've got new accessibility emoji, which is really cool. So like hearing aid in ear, you've got a prosthetic leg right there. Um, lots of cool stuff here, uh, like seeing eye dog or accessibility dog, which is dope that Apple has actually taken the time to add those. You've also got some fun new animals, sloth, flamingo, skunk, and orangutan. Those are common. You've got waffle now, which is pretty sweet. Uh, it looks like those are falafel, and then you also got butter emoji, and then garlic for when somebody's got that stanky breath. Uh, yawn emoji, probably my favorite out of all these. Some new outfits right here you can uh, throw around in a group chat. Also got this right here, you know, banjo. That's either parasailing or like parachuting, kite and yo-yo, lots of good additions, uh, and I think like Apple did a pretty good job this year. But you know, I'm, I'm almost starting to think, guys, as you probably are as well, like what else is there to add? I feel like our emoji appetite has just been getting steadily fed since like iOS 8 now. And they've been doing really good adding new stuff every year, especially stuff I'm not expecting. But uh, I mean, there are only so many objects out there in the world. So who knows what they'll add in the future, but this is the official list for iOS 13. All right, so kicking things off over on the home screen, you'll notice this one immediately. Great news if you have an iPhone XS or any other 3D touch enabled device. It seems like they have finally, guys, after four betas, after weeks of waiting, fixed 3D touch. It's not perfect, as you can see right there, it sort of misfired, but it's finally almost back to where it was, where, you know, 3D touching on something actually allows you to 3D touch, which is amazing. Alongside that, 3D touching on apps now is going to give you a redesigned menu. This is also present on the iPad as well, but wanted to show you it on the iPhone. And now when you're in this window, you can actually like drag this around to move the icon, which is really weird. I actually don't like it at all, considering the fact that there's actually a rearrange apps option now, which is super random because if you tap on that, you go into wiggle mode. And the reason it's there is because if you do that now, like it sort of still goes into wiggle mode, but it's a little bit more confusing because of haptic touch, like an action is actually performed. So for everybody that's gonna be confused in that transition, we have the rearrange apps button or toggle right here, which is nice. But I don't know, the layer of complexity that Apple is adding here is, I don't know, it's a lot and I don't know if it's for the better yet. I need to spend some more time with it. Also for 3D touch, if you head over to accessibility, touch, and then there's a new section called 3D and haptic touch, there's a redesigned menu or new options here, especially right here where it says touch duration. You can now change it between slow for, you know, how long it takes to expand, which is that, or fast, which is pretty much instantly. Again, if you have 3D touch, I feel like Apple's integration here of haptic touch on top of that is weird because we literally have like the technology for a pressure sensitive screen. Uh, but Apple's really been pushing haptic touch lately just because it's rumored uh, 3D touch that is to go away on the 2019 iPhone. So in the meantime, we're sort of dealing with this. Now also new in the iOS 13 beta 4 is that the settings app itself, these menus right here got a little bit taller. Don't really know why and I think it's a bug because you'll notice that the icon and text next to it is sort of offset. It doesn't appear to be just right yet. So that looks a little bit different too. Sliding over to the widget view right here, the edit button is just a little bit different. No huge update there, but it's a little design tweak that I thought you guys would enjoy. In the messages app, if you wanna send a voice message just like this, the icon has been tweaked. This interface is honestly the same and it's so easy to accidentally send the voice message, which is, uh, you know, I've seen that a few times in a number of group chats, uh, but this icon itself is a little bit different and I like it. It feels like it's like warning you, hey, you're actually sending a voice message versus I believe it was a microphone icon which almost made you think it was dictation uh, and it was not, <laughs> it was definitely not that. In settings under passwords and accounts, you guys may have seen this bug floating around over the weekend where if you just repeatedly tapped on this, you could actually get into the section without authenticating with face ID or touch ID or even a passcode. So it wasn't that serious of a bug, like obviously you had to have the phone unlocked for this to work, but if that was something that you were worried about, it is corrected now so you are safe again in iOS 13 beta 4. In photos, whenever you're playing a video, the trash can and favorite icons now show up properly. Before, I believe it was only showing the share icon, 
pause and then the volume or no volume button, but now it all works properly, which is sweet. Also, watch this cool animation. Whenever you go to share a photo or video in iOS 13 beta 4, you get a slightly tweaked animation right there. Now, out of all the aesthetic changes in iOS 13, probably one of the nicest that is super small, but really ties the whole experience together, found in the music app. Whenever you switch a song uh, and you're using the new blurred music live lyric view, you'll see it transitions really nicely to the next set of album art if you're like not listening to an album straight through, listening to a playlist with a lot of stuff in it. It looks amazing, again, really small change, but before it would abruptly change from like blue to orange and just not look that great. Also in iOS 13 beta 4, just barely, the share sheet seems to be a bit more translucent or transparent, but it's really hard to show. Um, and I think it's a small change. It may be a placebo, I could just be seeing this, but I feel like it's a little bit different. Alongside, again, I saw somebody post about this over on Reddit. The blur on folders also appears to be a little bit different as well, but I'm not sure if this changed in beta 4 or if that was like beta 1 beta 2 or beta 3. I like it though. It's like you can almost see the content trying to peek out from behind. Inside of the activity app, there's a new section called trends, which is actually super cool. It'll sort of like animate each time and show you, you know, where you're doing well and uh, where you uh, where you need to figure your stuff out. There's now a new section saying, you know, where it needs more data. So stand minutes, cardio fitness, walking pace, running pace. To be fair, uh, I'm a little insulted that it says that because I definitely like have tracked walks and runs through my watch uh, multiple times before, also done cardio, which is super strange. But now it's going to tell you in iOS 13 beta 4 where it needs some more help getting some extra data. In iOS 13 beta 4, when you're editing a Memoji, you know, you got to give it to Apple for just, they're really having a good time with these features this summer. Uh, you now have the option to either have one accessory like in both ears or a different accessory in each ear. I don't even... I don't really get this one. It's kind of fun, I guess, though. Like if you want to mix and match, for example, you know, let's say, you know, two AirPods is just too much. So now you can do like one ear with nothing, as you guys can see there, and then another ear with, you know, your AirPod in it, if you just really want to be that much of a hype beast. Now, aside from all those changes, guys, I want to tell you without question, this is the best and most stable iOS 13 beta so far. I'm also very, very happy to report for you guys that the YouTube freezing issue is finally fixed. Uh, there's a YouTube update that made it a lot better, but I just want to let you guys know, like, it's better now. You can actually watch videos in peace and you guys can stream all those iUpdate videos 24 seven nonstop until your device dies and then you recharge and you keep watching. So uh, if you were watching YouTube a lot, you notice those issues, those are fixed now. Alongside like the touch delay, I noticed that a lot in the last version, even though it was so incredibly fast. I mean, even look at how quick the response times are on all these applications. It's, uh, it's even better than it was then and there's not as much lag, which is super cool. So performance has been good. Hopefully battery life gets a little bit better as well, but it's hard to say. I've only been using it for a couple of hours. In the meantime, I hope you guys like iOS 13 beta 4 continues to go in a good direction. And let me know if I missed any changes or anything else cool that you saw. Tell me about it down below in the comment section. Hit like if you enjoyed it. Hit subscribe for more. I've been Sam. Hope you guys are doing well. I'll talk to you all in my next video.